Welcome to Flat Earth Debate Uncut and After Show. I'm your host Nathan Oakley and if you are new to this channel or you've not done so already then be sure to subscribe, hit the bell notification icon and join button to keep up to date with the Flat Earth Debate. If you'd like to support the channel there is a super chat that runs alongside each of these shows while they are premiering. There's also a PayPal, Patreon and crypto link in the info box below the video. Speaking of Patreon, I'm going to do a quick shout out to all of you who do support me on Patreon. Let's just close these windows first though. A big shout out of thanks and appreciation to Neo the One, Lost Cat FE, Rob W, Open Minded, Reese Pound, Del West Watson, Mike, Henrik86, Muted, Dick Earth Skeptic, The Flat Earth Channel.com, Chris Hillman, NA Literalist, Maria Neelands, Unbelievable Productions, Blue Ridge Ranger, Rob H, Burn Fat Till My Stomach Is As Flat As The Earth, Nathan Thompson, The Real Gabster, Windrider, Missouri Bear, Liam Nedrick, Dank, Erwin Jennisons, Abraham Mohammed, Dave Rakia Gafford, Nye By, Adrian Quintana, Skeptic936, Life Is Short, Fireball X, Felix Hung, T Texas Mike, Edwin Johnson, Kirsten Smith, Tina Baker, Alexander Main, and David Wayne Foster. So a massive shout out of thanks and appreciation to all of you for supporting me on Patreon. Uh, now it does look like there's at least a couple of people in the Discord server, so I'll raise the mic on them. And you can enjoy their conversation while I sit up for today's live show. I don't know. It doesn't matter. Hey, Flatsoids, can you hear us? Hello, how's it going? Hello. I definitely heard rumblings before I joined. Is, is everyone going all shy? I was only Ryan in here. <laughs> That'll be it then. <laughs> I was but, talking about the uh, Spurs. Platzoid's just saying hello to you. What's up, Platzoid? Go on, Neil. I was saying, I was listening to the Spurs chemo thing, and I was waiting for Brummy. He set him up nice with the with the why the sun doesn't move when he's on a plane, but then he didn't follow through with the flight times changing. You can't expect pe people like Tommy to just suddenly become instant experts. So while I didn't necessarily realise you were in the chat listening or watching my comments go by, it I didn't imply that they should know this. I mean, I pointed out that nobody had pointed it out, but I'd pointed it out in the chat. It's just, you know, nobody else has recognised it. Well, that's not a criticism. It's just a fact. Nobody else has recognised it. So while you might have been waiting for Tommy to point out that his assertion is that you've got Earth turning underneath the aeroplane while you're watching the sun. So because they're on this subject of sun, nobody's recognising that what his assertion actually entails is Earth turning underneath the aeroplane, because that's precisely what he said. Yeah. No, Tommy knows it. He's here. That may be, but what I'm saying is, if you're in a discussion about the, the sun, they, they've got this very convoluted way of detaching observations in the sky from observations on the ground. So they're more than happy to talk about angular si size changes and things of that nature when they're talking about the sun not changing in not actual size, that's that angular size, right? But to recognise that some of the assertions about the actual monitoring of the sun have two issues. The first being, they're comparing what time does to how they will observe the sun and drawing conclusions, when in reality, their arbitrary construct of time has come from the sun, it's derived from it. Now, nobody's recognising that in the discussion either. Fine, that's the first problem. No criticism of them. I'm not expecting that they should say, hang on a second, time is a, a concept and you're applying that to the sun as we observe it based on our time frame with our time zones. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like you've got all these different layers of the arbitrary construct we call time in this discussion. 
But no one's recognising the fact that where's it come from in the first place? Oh, from the sun that you're now going to back engineer your observation with reference to time that came from the sun in the first place. But then they're talking about it with the Earth rotating underneath the plane. And you're like, hang on, that means the continent it's travelling to. But that's on a tangent to the discussion that they're having. So you've got to have all these different diff cognitive wires wired to all the other different <laughs> arguments in order to pick that out. Because as far as they're concerned, they're just talking about the not actual size of the sun not changing in not actual size as it moves from its not actual position as they track it with the ground turning underneath the plane according to the fundy globed. Yeah, it gets convoluted, right? It does. And me being able to concisely summarise it is only because of four years of training in this regard, right? I don't expect everybody to be able to keep track of every single step of the argument, how it links to the actual argument, and how a point in their actual argument defeats a whole part of a different narrative in a totally different argument. So in this case, they're talking about not actual size of the sun, moving and tracking with planes. It's like, well, yeah, but if you then take that in the context of Coriolis and proving Earth spins, you've got Earth turning under your plane, mate. Well, that doesn't happen. Charlotte to North Carolina would be an hour and a half, not four and a half hours, because you're claiming Earth's turning underneath. Coincidentally, that's actually your rhetoric. Your rhetoric claims Earth's turning underneath stuff at 15 degrees an hour, but it's not observed. We'd have shortened flight times. Nobody pointed that out, but like I say, they're on a different discussion. Uh. Yeah, thanks to your criticism of me not going in 24-7, if I do get an opportunity where I am just literally actually relaxing, trying to just, you know, chill, and I happen to be watching 24-7, and it happens to not be incredibly noisy here, I have gone in. Whereas before, if you hadn't moaned at me, Neil, I probably wouldn't. So I went in yesterday as well and <laughs> chatted with... <laughs> oh, I missed it again! No, you wanted, you wanted me to go in there a bit more? I was like, fine. If I can, I will. The arena thing is obviously a bit more organised than I can cope with. In other words, I'm not there yeah. figuring out what went on with the arena when you first suggested it. I just went and tried to go into the arena, didn't know what I was doing, couldn't cope with the Discord bit. And I was like, okay, well, I can get in this, this room with everyone talking already and I can easily pummel whoever's making up nonsense. Oh, so you went into the live stream? Yeah, that was where the conversation was happening. Yeah, I, I jumped back and forth. My wife's giving me a bit of a hard time with it, so I've been shutting it down lately. I spend so much time on this con. Da, 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 so. uh, what was that mimicking? Or who was that mimicking? Who's that supposed to be? <laughs> uh, my wife. Oh, I knew it. Slap your wrists, Neil. Go and repent. <laughs> I'm sure, she's an adorable woman and absolutely correct about what she was Good morning. nagging you incessantly about. Hey, 10th. <laughs> Slap, slap those wrists, Neil. What's going on? No, no, nothing much. Taking Everything's wife's, great here. Taking his wife's name in vain is what he's doing. <laughs> <laughs> She's sleeping now, so I'm safe. Up at, up so at she can't hear you, so it's okay. I mean, at least you've got the common yeah, decency yeah, to do yeah. it when she's unconscious, Neil. That's very reasonable of you. <laughs> <laughs> too much, man. Too much. Too early for this. What's going on? I'm just, I'm just kidding with you. I recently had a wedding anniversary, so we're all loved up in this household at the moment. So that's, that's why I'm being critical. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> what are we talking about? No, uh, Nathan was saying how he jumped onto Discord yesterday, and I missed it again. Are you going to trim it out on the show, or was nothing worthwhile, Nathan? I did actually try to trim it out. I just couldn't, <laughs> I couldn't get um, the download software to accept it. It just didn't want to know for some reason. I don't know if it's only because it's recently gone through the processing and it's a 12-hour video but for some reason it wouldn't let me trip in, trim it out so I don't know. I'll try again maybe maybe not I know you don't like to hear it but they when you come in there you know you, you're highly exalted there you know sorry I was fiddling with something highly what what you're he highly exalted. You. you know, you're held up in a high standard there. And well-deserved. I, I, I felt very welcomed. So, yeah. Well, it's a, it's a common 
courtesy that someone else who fights for the same cause, you know, obviously the nature of the earth, who has a different show than the show that is being broadcast, if they ever come on, it's it's just common courtesy, uh, you know, to hold that person in regards because they don't have to come on. They have their own show and just like, you know, members of other shows who come on to our show are held in high regards. I've been a taboo when he comes here, you know, we hold him up because he does good work. I was recording an interview I did with Roxanne and I you know, started it all recording and they were like, oh, we're going to be here while setting up. So I thought, okay, fine, I'll, I'll pop off and make a brew or whatever I did, maybe go to the loo, who knows. Um, but I disappeared and just left it recording, thinking I'll edit out that later. And as I disappeared, there's Roxanne saying, this guy's like a, a general. This is really exciting. I can't believe we've got Nathan Oakley on. I'm like, what the fuck? Well, listen to it back. I'm like, what? <laughs> general. <laughs> I mean, I was well, obviously well, I was flattered, you know, I was flattered, but, but at the same time, well, it's a little Spurs, bit like, what? Uh, Spurs <laughs> really? did the same thing, except with Fight the Flat Earth. He got like, excited because Fight the Flat Earth was going to be on our show. Uh, and uh, it was like, you know, that's the opposite, right? Because they're on the other side or he's on the other side. So it's like, it's it's not that big of a deal. It's just, oh, the person who runs this show is going to be on this show. Let's see how well will they do. Uh, so I don't know. I don't. It's nice to have um, characters, you know, who have their own shows on our show. But they're just people at the end of the day. I mean, you and me. Personality too. Well, that's how I view it, Tenth. It's just people. So when Spurs came on on Friday and was like all excited, I'm like, it's another day at the office, right? Don't, why, you know, why do you want to treat yeah. a guy like royalty if the panel's full of shit? He's not going to get any better special or different treatment. It's just some guy. But while I might tell myself that, that isn't necessarily the opinion of the consensus at large or even the little niche that we occupy here on YouTube. They don't consider it that way either. Now, for me, it's because I'm not interested in what Craig does. I'm not subscribed. I don't watch his stuff. I get exposed to it. People bring it here and show it to me and tell me about you know Musa, for example. But I'm not actively participating in his stuff, so I don't care. It's inconsequential to me. But that doesn't mean that the people who watch are like very, very keen. So as I've seen the the Friday debate get mirrored here, there, and everywhere, you're like looking in the chat and you're like, wow, there's actually quite a few noteworthy people paying this attention. And then uh, this morning, Paul on the plane got in touch and he's like, I'd like to interview you about this. I'm like, yeah, sure, no problem. Eight o'clock tonight. I'm like, yeah, great. And then Anthony called me and was like, um, Mitchell from Australia, the co-host, is trying to get in touch with you to arrange to be interviewed. I'm like, okay, they're keen. Um, great. Yeah, I've already agreed to do it with Paul on the plane. But, you know, in other words, it's people mm-hmm. are paying it more attention than I gave it credit when it was Friday morning and Spurs is like, are we going to clear out the panel? And I'm like, I don't care. The guy's not royalty. But uh, I'm not saying people see him as royalty, but I'm saying people <laughs> people see him as of some note, noteworthy, more than I would ever give him credit for personally but that's you know i can't control what other people give credit to and what they don't it's like a i mean don't get me wrong it's like a sporting event but 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 let me get back to the first part uh where did i learn uh gas pressure without a container here on the show with you and your panel okay where did i learn uh you know, the arguments against Earth-based Coriolis, which doesn't exist. But Coriolis is a real thing. I mean, you've shown it on the roundabout here on the show. So you're teaching us because over four years you learned it and you were taught by others as well. And so the show is almost like a breakthrough uh, segment on YouTube where you can learn about things through people who have learned it before you. So the respect is there and the honor is there for the person who's taken the time to teach it. Now, that separate facet is stands on its own. Now, when someone comes on a show to debate, it's just another human being. We'll just see how good the arguments are because that person had to learn the argument somewhere. And so we learned the arguments here and they learned the arguments from wherever they went. And now what was good about that show with Fight the Flat Earth was not the personalities, but the arguments. And he got walloped. He had no argument. Well, the, the arguments themselves have come from Quantum Eraser. 
So the guru of this operation in that regard is definitely not me. My, my ability lies in paying close attention to what's being said and putting together how they've either formulated a policy, recognising that. that. That is what I'm good at, paying close attention to my show, which is about debate, therefore I'm paying close attention to the debate. And the knowledge and information I'm armed with is quantum eraser. That's not me. I can't take credit for that. You're like, you're teaching people. Well, no, I'm passing on my understanding. That's what I'm doing. Right, right. but he got it from somebody. Anthony comes in with stuff. We get it from Anthony, but he got it from somebody. Arwen has great points that he makes. He got it from somebody. I mean, everybody gets it from somebody. Uh, yeah, kind of okay. Like uh, well, I agree. I wouldn't be winning this argument had QE not sat down with me on repeated occasions with me saying, I don't understand, <laughs> can you say it again? Uh, personally, on one-to-one -one conversations where he's taken the time out of his day, sit with, sit with me, metaphorically, for prolonged periods of time, repeating things. Now, you know QE, right? And yeah, yeah. could you imagine that Smart. that would be irritating for him? Well, I would imagine it was. <laughs> <laughs> but he tolerated it. <laughs> so, you know, all well, credit to QE. He, he, I'm just he saying. He had, he had said he had purposely invested time in you. Uh, so uh, obviously he's making students uh, for his arguments that he took time to learn. And, you know, what better investment than the person who has his own show, right? I mean, I, I know some of QE's arguments, but I don't have a show. Uh, but uh, I'm on a show that has it, <laughs> you know. So we're just spreading the good arguments. And uh, I, I just know. Yeah, it's all just... Go on. Ten, uh, go ahead. Go on. It's all just teamwork. That's all I'm trying to say. All oh, absolutely. Teamwork. Yeah. I mean, work, I could extend that out to every person on the panel. Yeah. Yes, right. Absolutely correct, Flatsword. It is a matter of teamwork. And when credit is being given out, it gets given out to everybody on the panel equally in terms of the debate. But in terms of the information itself, that has had literally one source. So I can't, I'm not going to highlight it repeatedly. I am. Sorry if that's irritating. And I will give credit to everyone else as well. And I do. Thank them every single show. Yeah, I mean, we've heard you say 80% of what you know came from QE, so you're not <laughs> trying to hide it. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. when I first started listening to this, not your show, Nathan, but just Flat Earth, and I was catching some debates, ballers were handing Flat Earth is their ass. Until I turned on this show, thanks to, um, you know, who, David Weiss, I saw a little turn in the tide. And I saw bowlers getting their asses handed to them. You know, you know uh, I like to comment on that. When, when I first started going outside of, you know, just my own understanding of it, and in the early days watching some of these shows, they, 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 they weren't debate shows. There was like, uh, this is what ballers say, and here's what we say. And there wasn't too many debates until I heard about your show. Uh, I wasn't aware of, you know, 24 seven or any of that for some reason. And, uh, but I never, uh, equated ballers handing anybody their rear end. It was like, well, that's what they say about that, but what's our, you know, comeback. What, what do we say about that? And it was like, Oh, well, that makes more sense, obviously, because if this happens, then this must happen. It's not happening. So there is no earth, you know, rotation, but that, on this show, you actually get a guy who actually wants to voice it and defend it. So now we got the good debate going. So this is what makes this show great. Because now they have to stand up for the nonsense of the uh, argument they think is strong. And then, you know, you just pick it apart. Well, what about this? Uh, you know, I mean, how many times has Zanuck died here? Rumpus, my goodness. How many times has he died? And then changes everything. And then Craig changing the dependent variable three times within three minutes. Amazing. Right, let's get a few people on the uh, all involved. You mean to tell me in the beginning when it first started, you don't think the ball has had the upper hand? So no, because I, I, I wasn't, uh, I may have not listened to what you've listened to. I, I used to listen to flat earth proofs are these and then the ballers would say obviously the earth is turning but then the flat earth proofs would show it's not turning but i didn't have any live debates uh, like we're experiencing here so and i never thought 
logic lost to anything. So I just went with logic. It's a logical consistency of an argument is what I go by. It doesn't matter what the personality is. I mean, you can have a, a football team's got bigger people on the other side, and oh, look how big they are. But the team with the smaller people wins the game because they got a better game plan. <laughs> I mean, so. I'll give you, for instance, the Southern Hemisphere, Northern Hemisphere thing. That would stop Flat Earth is cold, stone dead in 2015 and 2016. Yeah, I never encountered that. I think at the start of this, like, I, you know, I didn't know how to put it into words or how to go about it or explain it to people. Like, But now, you know, we've got the housekeeping questions and you start to, you know, get a little bit behind you. Yeah, I'm glad you brought that up. Uh, I think the housekeeping questions were vital uh, for me to hear for this Absolutely. show because it was like, hey, those are good questions. I like that. You know whose idea that was? Uh, Anthony Riley. Anthony. Correct. Sleeping Warrior's idea. Excellent. You see, because in sales, uh, and if you want to get your point across, you, you've got to ask a question because you've got to make the other person respond. And they're not going to respond if you just talk and yapping. So if you want to further a conversation, ask questions and be quiet and listen to what another person says. Everything comes out. Do they want your product? Do they not want your product? Uh, at least in sales, it worked that way. And then in, in the debate, you get to hear the real position. Well, what about this if this is what's happening? All of a sudden, they go on this long, crazy response that contradicts what they said. And you didn't have to do a thing except ask a question. And that's it. That's, I like the, science, you know, the scientific method because I really didn't know how to think about it or how to you know so all that like manipulating the independent variable and i know all that helps it's, i know i like that side of stuff the craziest part is the history of how we've been brainwashed to um i'm going to say understand the word science to mean i've proven something or what i say is correct because we were taught it quite early on fifth grade is pretty young but yet you move on swiftly to just so stories in the science class and you just don't recognize it as it's less and less prevalent the actual method of science through your schooling but by the time you leave school you know you'll more than happily pay attention to an advert telling you the michelins are better and they've done science to prove it um when they haven't <laughs> they've just measured stuff maths not science but yet you have somebody like qe come along and go well you were actually taught this you know in other words you, you can't really stand in opposition to it it's part of the curriculum and it's just matter of fact. It's very narrow. It's very specific. You've been taught it. This is what it is. This is just a refresher. And you go, oh, wow, <laughs> yeah. It's uh, a lot more simple than you actually may think. But yet what we're told is science by the pseudoscientists who've effectively lied to us. Oh, <laughs> maybe we'll get back to that. Go on, sorry, go on. Look at the other day. Even um, Craig, fight the tight shirt. He was saying, uh, yeah, Nathan, I know you don't know what science is. So he still doesn't know what science is. Yeah, that's projection. And he, yeah, he swears you don't know what science is. What I understand well, is that it's a method. Well, that's but another key point. That's another key point. The, the side that wants the truth is interested. And of course, this is my biased opinion. So I'll put that out there right now. To me, the side that wants the truth will, is interested in clear definitions of words so that a word being used in that context could only mean that thing, not five other things. And when you listen to these debates, they're throwing words around like crazy but that have no uh, connection to the argument itself. So then we say, well, define gravity. What do you mean by gravity? Now, when someone says gravity, in the context of a flat earth debate, we all know what it is. It's supposed to be some kind of force keeping you down. But then when we ask them to define it, we're trying to get them to define the current understanding of gravity, which is it's not a force holding you down, which destroys their whole argument for the use of the word. <laughs> but they won't want to go there, so they hijack and we get a nice big fight going on. You see what I'm saying? Oh, they'll listen to Bradley and ask you to explain it. 
Like you did. I would just enjoy it. Yeah, but I mean, I maybe we're reading too a... much into this. Sorry, sorry go ahead, Flat Sword. <laughs> I think I'll just enjoy it if we get a normal glory on sometime. Not the same shoals every time. You know, the same trolls. That's a rare occurrence, but it has happened once or twice where your average show normie comes on. He's, in other words, he's not a he's not a fundy zealot like the globe believers that we typically get on or most of the time get on. But yeah, that has happened a couple of times. I was just going to say, given that that Craig said, "No, you're using a fallacy of begging the question," I'm paraphrasing. But in other words, he's just projecting this stuff back out. So when I point out how he doesn't understand science, he doesn't have a independent variable that's physical it's mathematical his reply was no you're begging the question <laughs> well he he also he also said fallacy 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 he said well explain what like, you mean he never did he just kept i like how you like ended the show something. again neil i'm not a scientist at all yeah that's how i rounded out the show but the fallacy <laughs> fallacy isn't something that is ever going to get a uh, baller detailing an example of how the fallacy fallacy works and how what I had said was ever going to be worked into that fallacy. Now, the fallacy fallacy is is real, but I'm yet to hear anybody actually detail correctly what that fallacy is. Now, I'm not going to do it right here, right now, but I'll, next time you hear it, ask them to actually define it. Say, what is the fallacy fallacy? And how am I guilty of it once they've defined it? If you're being claimed to use that fallacy. Now, they think the fallacy fallacy just means that you're just claiming fallacy when you're wrong, which it isn't. But that's what they think it means. Just calling fallacy when it's not a fallacy. No, that's not how it works. But nevertheless, you'll get it heard. Maybe should I go through the fallacy fallacy? Yeah, you got four. Who's that on Orthodox, right? That started that I don't know. The fallacy fallacy is a real fallacy. No, it, the I fallacy fallacy would work as such, right? Was Let, let's say I formulate a begging the question fallacy to claim that my car is silver. Now, for the sake of this example, you must accept that I do have a silver car. Now, it is actually documented. I've got videos about my silver car. I've still got it. It's a silver car. Now, if I use a fallacy to claim that that car is silver, it doesn't mean that when you debunk that fallacy, you've automatically disproven that the car is silver. So that would be to use the fallacy fallacy to assert that where a fallacy is being used it does disprove the premise that's being asserted simply because it's being used with logical fallacy. When in reality, the claim is still true. So the fact that a fallacy has been used to claim that as true makes it a fallacy fallacy if you claim that it's not true. Make sense? Well, that's a tongue twister. <laughs> not the silver. Are you talking real silver or painted silver? Just saying, not the metal. <laughs> my, my point is that to debunk something that's being claimed with fallacy and claim that the debunk is therefore legitimate would be the legitimate use of the fallacy fallacy as opposed to just claim well just because you've said fallacy means that you're just using the word fallacy to mean I'm wrong so therefore I cry fallacy fallacy and therefore you're wrong you're just saying fallacy well no as exampled by yeah you get an example when I say you're guilty of a logical fallacy mm-hmm well, in the case of if the Earth is spinning, it's basing the supposition that you're then going to example on the presupposition that the Earth is spinning. That's a begging the question fallacy. Well, that's detailing right. what is the fallacy and how it's being used, as opposed to just, just saying fallacy, fallacy. No example, no right. detailed explanation of what that fallacy is or how it relates to what's been said. So basically, if it's a burden uh, reversal... Uh, Burden of reverse fallacy, is that, is that the way you say it? The burden of proof if reversal someone... fallacy, where yeah. you challenge yeah, your so... opponent to prove your claim for you. Right, so if someone's using a burden of proof reverse fallacy, and you, when you are highlighting that fallacy, you're correct. But if you're just saying fallacy, fallacy without the highlight, then that it's, it's not a get-out-of-jail card for you. But disproving somebody's claim of a fallacy isn't a fallacy fallacy either. You're not necessarily proving the claim in the first instance of the fallacy that's just been used true by disproving it in that instance. So that's not a fallacy fallacy if you just prove that what somebody's claimed is a fallacy is incorrect. And then you have to give an example of how it's incorrect. Right. Yeah, it's how Craig was using it. He kept saying <laughs> fallacy well, one, fallacy. <laughs> Maybe. One thing's for certain. One thing's for certain. If you're going to get a channel name and come on the show, pick fallacy fallacy as your channel name. We'll have a lot of fun with you. 
Maybe. <laughs> I don't, know, I don't, I don't see many examples of people actually <laughs> utilizing the fallacy fallacy. It's not a common fallacy. You know, you... Neither have I. You know, we haven't played what's... So we haven't battle. played What's Your Fallacy in a long time. What's Your Fallacy? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Like what's, and now, <laughs> What's Your Fallacy? <laughs> like a game a good one. You should do a segment on that uh, every, every once in a while. Welcome to Flat Earth Debate Live. I'm your host, Nathan Oakley, and if you are new to this channel, or you've not done so already, then be sure to subscribe, hit the bell notification icon, and join button if you'd like to become a Nathan Oakley 1980 channel member and keep up to date with the Flat Earth Debate. If you'd like to support the channel, there is a super chat that runs alongside each of these shows while they are live. There's also a PayPal, Patreon, and crypto link in the info box below the video. Most importantly, if you'd like to join the discussion, simply mute the page you are currently watching, then click the link in the info box below this video to join the panel and express your views on the nature of Earth. If you do join, please don't swear. If you do, you'll be ejected, and if you are, please don't try to rejoin the stream using sock accounts. You'll be warmly welcome back on the next stream. Please also share the show on social media. Sharing the show obviously increases the live audience, but this in turn increases the chances of a more diverse panel. So please share the show on Facebook and Twitter. And one last time, if you're new to the channel or you've not done so already, then be sure to subscribe, hit the bell notification icon and join button to keep up to date with the Flat Earth Debate. Now we are joined by Flatsoid, 10th Man, Paul Hall and Brian uh, have we got anyone else in there? You know, I think that's it. Together with a whole bunch of people in Discord. So, welcome, one and all. Good morning. Good morning. Woohoo, good Hello. morning. Fallacy, fallacy. Queer Mora. Good morning. Good morning. We haven't had any housekeeping questions or any claims yet, Neil, before you claim fallacy, fallacy. Any evidence of a physical geometric sphere edge horizon? Hey, Chocolate. Just in time for the first housekeeping question. Good morning, good morning. Good morning. Any signs of a physical geometric sphere edge horizon, formerly known as Earth curvature? Nope. 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 No. Even surveying is done with straight angles. Be needing a straight line now. Any evidence of axial rotation of the Earth based variety? None whatsoever. Brian, the balloons de debunk that. No, not that I'm aware of. <laughs> no. Okay. Any evidence of the distance to the sun? Well, well, let's go back to that last one that kind of was ended any evidence, there, but any evidence of axial rotation? Yeah. Now, if if the Earth was rotating, uh, all you have to do is leave the Earth, and you would see it rotate under you. Would, would that be a something that should be obvious? That's what they claim. 15 degrees an hour deviation as Earth rotates underneath. That's precisely what they claim proves Earth spinning. Yes, so let's convert 15 degrees to miles per hour on the surface. What is it at the equator? What do they say? 1,039 right, no, miles 1053 per hour? or something like that. Yeah, so you leave the Earth surface. The surface, the outer part, is turning 1,033 or 1,039 miles per hour that would be very noticeable unless they want to change physics well they just convolute tangential speed with angular velocity and, and how do they do that with a real demonstration well they don't they just talk about turning you're talking you've transposed the 15 degrees an hour which is what is commonly claimed to prove earth spins that's 15 degrees an hour as earth turns underneath the inertial reference frame 
Well, that is yeah. actually transposed into an actual mile per hour speed. I don't know, 1,050 or something like that at the equator. And it obviously gets less on their presupposed sphere Earth as you move up towards the poles. Or down towards the poles, depending on your presupposition or your use of antipodal language. In any event, what I'm talking about is their presupposition that you've got angular speed, very slow sounding, 15 degrees an hour, comparable to a watch or whatever they compare it to. Right? But when you actually mm. translate that into actual speed in miles per hour, the velocity is very, very high. Okay. So, so. What, what is going to be uh, seen and observed is miles per hour if you leave linear that surface, correct? Is not, linear, linear velocity is not the same as rotation. Okay. So what's your point? So we're supposed well, to see 15 on, degrees me... drift per hour yeah, as a result yeah, of the, of the high velocity that the ground's travelling at or claim to be travelling at beneath an inertial reference frame. Well, we don't see that. So our point is that we don't see that effect. This Coriolis drift. We do, that. We do that. Where do we see that? Where do, where do we see that? <laughs> Hold on. Hold on. When the stars appear to rotate. The stars. Wait, where, do we see, where do we see the 15 degrees an hour drift as Earth rotates underneath? Where is that observed? Stars. Look at the stars. So not, not the Earth then, the stars. Yes, yeah, stars. Yeah, we're talking about the Earth yeah, here. Thanks. We're talking about the Earth, not the stars. Exactly. So let's. Exactly. So okay, you said the stars are rotating. Oh, you ruined. How did you, how, how did you extrapolate that that's the Earth rotating? All, how did you all get these that stars when you just said the stars are rotating? All these millions of stars appear to rotate, are, but we're different. Commander, okay. if you're going to talk to everybody, nobody's going to get a chance. Uh, no, I, I just know you. No, no, no. I want to hear him because he first is talking about the Earth yeah. turning and he switched in the middle about the stars turning and Chocolate's got a very good point here. How do you still talk about the Earth turning when now you're talking about the stars? I'm saying the stars appear to rotate, but in actuality, we are. Oh, so, so, so two stars, two stars, right, two stars appear to rotate. Sorry, you're begging the question, though. You're assuming that's because we're oh, turning underneath the them. Up. My bad, trying to respond. Dude, Maybe I could respond isn't. without you interrupting. Is that possible? So you're begging the question. Yeah. You're saying the stars appear to rotate. Yeah, we can all agree about that. But you're saying because Earth's turning underneath. That's just begging the question, just stating what you're trying to prove. That's not true. Uh, Why am I? Are you saying they they appear to rotate because we're on a spinning ball? Do we observe that stars? Do we observe? Is that what you're saying? Are you saying they're rotating because we're on the spinning ball? He did say that, Chocolate. He's already said that. It's actually us rotating. He stated. He just begged the question. We've heard it. Yeah. So what? What's more likely? No, no. Hang on, Flat. Don't ask me what's more likely. Don't ask us what's more likely. Mate, Commander. Hello, hello, Commander. Me, hello, no, I'm not. I'm shutting you up. Finish. Don't you understand where you're being Mason, told? No, I, I let you shut finish. up, I let or I will gag you. Shut you up. Last you chance. You Last you chance. Then you're getting gagged. I let, I let you Last finish. chance. You're gonna have to let me finish. No, Don't I'm not gonna have to me. let you do anything. You stupid dick. I control the show. When I tell you to shut up, you will shut up, or I'll gag you. Now, if anyone in the comments wants to complain about you fundy morons who cannot shut up. Then this is why you get gagged. Now I'm going to take you off mute, and you're either going to tolerate me talking to you, or I'll have to gag you again. When I say no, that means shut up. You don't have to like you it. You can sod off if you don't like it. You just gagged a child, Nathan. So now what you're you insulting me and my family, you scumbag. Now you don't no, take part in this conversation again today. Now you can disappear and not listen either, because I'm gagging you completely and sticking foam in your ears. So bye bye, sod off. Go to the Christian room. I'll move you to it. Yeah, you moron. Why? Well, how dare these people? They can't tolerate having their argument addressed in this instance. I beg in the question fallacy. I assume the Earth's rotating underneath to cause the apparent motion of the stars. That's his declaration. And all he's doing is begging the question. That's all he is doing. Now he's not going to listen to that. He's not going to have it pointed out. But he will rabbit on nonsense, telling us. What about this comparison to that, then? That's what he wants to actually do. Well, by doing that, he's essentially offering up a false dichotomy. Now, I recognise that as soon as he said it, but he will not shut up and thinks it's unreasonable to be interrupted to have his false dichotomy he's about to present pointed out. No, 
I will just point it out to you, fundies. And no amount of obfuscation and talking through me while I, yeah, interrupt you and your logical fallacy that you're about to offer up with a false dichotomy, which is more likely. Oh, so you're going to offer a false dichotomy. I know what those words mean. And I will shut you up and tell you it without you constantly interrupting me. Anybody who wants to know why I don't go elsewhere, it's why, yeah, I like being in control because I've actually got an argument to present to an audience. Now, if you go and compare Friday's show to Craig's show, you won't hear any of my arguments because for Craig's audience, he managed to talk through and obfuscate most of what I said. Good for Craig's audience if they don't want to hear it. Now, I can keep absolute control of these total assholes and shut them down when they're being unreasonable. What you'll also hear on my show is Craig's argument. Nice and clear with me shutting other people up so that he's not interrupted. Followed by him constantly interrupting me so his audience doesn't get to hear a response. Now here, you get to hear the response. And what do you know the people who do hear these responses, not constantly interrupted by assholes, take those winning arguments and permeate them out elsewhere now, don't they? Now, if I was on some asshole like Fight the Flat Earth channel, none of that information would come through. He'd make damn sure of it and you can compare. You hear my argument come through here. I have to shut down the Discord line so that you can hear it as an audience member. And what do you get from the fundies who don't have an argument? Oh, he's muting them. What? Muting them constantly interrupting? Obfuscating rebuttals? The fundy mute button can be dealt with here so that you as an audience member can hear the rebuttal. And you can hear them going, no, you're begging the question. Yeah, because that's all they've got. So if you're wondering, why don't you go on these neutral platforms? Because they're not neutral. They will obfuscate any decent rebuttal because it's damaging to their faith and they won't tolerate it, as has been shown time and time and time again. Partial reason for setting up this platform as a debate show. I went on plenty of debates. And what happened? You get turned right down and muted when you've got an argument so that they can talk through it. Well, here, I'm not going to tolerate that. I will let you make your argument, though, as you found with Craig. You heard his argument. You also heard a lot of filibustering and attempts to shut down the rebuttals so that he didn't have to respond to them. The only tactic available to them when they lose. So stopping that loss is the best tactic. Don't let the response be heard. Then you don't have to address it, right? Well, it still gets heard here. I've got control of that. And if you don't like it, you can suck my... Any evidence of gas pressure without a container? <laughs> Oh, uh, that, that guy reckons there is anyway, because it does millions of stars. <laughs> I, I just had the, the same stars, argument that with guy. that guy in 24-7, like 10 minutes ago, before I got here. <laughs> so. I, got, I got... But Nathan, how would you prove gas pressure without a container? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, Craig. We didn't Somehow, actually get that far on Friday, did we? the air out of the show. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we didn't get that far on Friday. We didn't get through all the housekeeping questions at all. They were partially obfuscated. Nevertheless, may may I, may I Nathan uh, ask Chocolate to finish the point on the previous question that he was about to make when that guy started rumpusing in Discord? Feel free. What about the star rotation? Well, I didn't know you had a conversation prior to the show with the same guy, but obviously you had something uh, on your mind to share with the audience here. So. You were asking him a question, and he was just rumpusing. So go on. I can't remember the well, topic. I asked him the same, the, the same question that I asked him earlier. Well, you think the stars appear to be rotating because you're on a spinning ball. Well, then why then, when you get off that spinning ball, are they still rotating? So what did he say to that uh rebuttal of yours he wouldn't address it just says the stars are rotating would make so, no so further claim other than that so 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 basically if the earth's rotation is causing the stars to look like they're moving back in the question you're saying if you get off of it it shouldn't be moving 
Yeah. Yeah, debunking the begging the question fallacy. But ultimately, it's just a begging the question fallacy, isn't it? You can formulate it. it is, if you're yeah, smart, definitely. you'd formulate it into an affirming the consequent. If Earth is turning, then I will observe star rotation. I observe star rotation, therefore Earth is turning. But he didn't formulate the full fallacy. He just said, we see apparent rotation. Why? Because Earth's turning. That's it. It's just a begging the question fallacy. Flat, flat out, straight, simple, begging the question. So chocolate. Right. You're saying that... So chocolate, you're saying that you won't accept... Uh, an appeal to a, an appeal to a logical fallacy fallacy <laughs> what <laughs> i will okay. i will not <laughs> okay then <laughs> well let's hope we don't hear that then well, nobody's uh, appealed to it but good point the, the the high priest says of their side neil degrasse tyson that when you kick a football chocolate uh the earth is spinning under the football He's being that's, racist that's to my golf weird. ball. He's being racist to my golf ball. Right, my that, ball and, and the bullet. Uh, they say the bullet, like we talked. Right, the, the bullet and the football. The earth turns under those things, but not airplanes, not the helicopters, not drones. Yeah, it must. That's the claim. Fifteen degrees an hour deviation. Oh, look at that plane. Seems like it's curving. You know why? Well, because Earth's turning underneath. Hold on, though. Wouldn't that shorten the flight time if it was travelling west? Because Earth would be turning underneath it, bringing the continent yeah. to it. So this claim... Go, go on. But do, you, but do you think you'll understand it's 460 metres a second? No, just give it an angle. It sounds slower. <laughs> any more for any more oh, on I, axial rotation? I was, Don't normally get it this covered in uh, housekeeping. You muted me now, Nathan. Thank you for that. Thank you for that. You didn't shut up. I don't know what you. I didn't know what you were referring to before. Oh, right, shall I try again? Try again. What? To, re to reason with you that you're talking constantly. Yeah. Well, the reason that I kept speaking before is because it was really weird. It, it was like I I let you finish your point and then I tried to make mine. Make shit. You over I run the show. Proceeded. I, I make Proceeded. the rules. Proceeded. Proceeded. Again, yes. you're not gonna let me finish. Proceeded. Yeah, because I make the gag rules. Me. You don't understand. I'm telling you, you not you asking want, you. you You're not you listening, though. Gag me. Still talking. When I talk, and then you, and then yeah, you I'll interrupt you because I run the show. I'll do what I like. You don't like that? Sod good. off, then. I don't care. I'll interrupt you as much <laughs> as I damn well Listen, please. If you want me to sod off, you can kick me from the server. I will. Eventually. But you've got a few chances right now, now to listen to me. right now. Do it now. <laughs> so are you going to give me orders? Nobody tells Nathan what to do, <laughs> yeah, buddy. Yeah, don't give me orders. Don't you get it? He's a rebel. <laughs> He anyway. wants a spanking. Give it to him. <laughs> anyway, I'll try again with you. Let me just try with him. When I said, when you said, what's more likely? That's the precursor to a false dichotomy. That's why I stopped you. Excellent. Glad we all understand each other. Perfectly reasonable to interrupt Crickets. when somebody uses a fallacy. To make a point. Especially when they're not acknowledging the previous point that we had to labour while you were on mute, which is that begging the question without even formulating it into affirming the consequence, pretty weak. So to be constantly filibustered and talked through by some dick that doesn't understand he's using a fallacy while we're explaining it to him and can't shut up, that's irritating. Moving on. Any evidence? We had distance to the sun already. We have, haven't we? Arwin wasn't here, though. That's why I can't remember it. Where are we up to? Any evidence the R value? <laughs> They would have a that, sphere if there was. That's a tricky one. Not really. If there was an R value, they would have a sphere. No sphere, no R. Tricky as in hard to prove or tricky as in a magical deception they use? Uh, Not a sphere, it's going to look toy. <laughs> of. <laughs> it would be kind of magical because that same R would be different had Mr. Baruni went back the next day or the day after that. I might have had a different R value. If he was around today, yeah. he would have spoken to some commoner garden globe heads that we encountered, and then they told him <laughs> with a hand wave, we do not see the geometric horizon, Mr. Bruni. <laughs> <laughs> Who are you anyway? Mountain. What are you trying to do? <laughs> <laughs> it only exists in the math. Imagine he was around oh, today and somebody gave him a P900. 
So go through no, the same yeah. thing. Well, uh, that's that's how you have, have been contact them and say you can't be saying that. <laughs> can, that. That'd be it. Sorry, Neil. Can, I'm asking, can someone explain to me what hypothetical means? Hypothetical? Yeah, because apparently I don't know what it means. I just want to make sure I understand. In the realm of the abstract. So it's not actual. Hypothetical. Yeah. That's not real. It's just hypothetical. It's conceptual, you could say. Any Why reason? is it that if they can claim um, ideal gas law is hypothetical and then claim the atmosphere is ideal gas, how does that make it real? Yeah, the atmosphere isn't ideal gas. There are no ideal gases. Exactly. That's on. That's my point. Okay. You lost me. What's their What's their point? Yeah, what's their argument? They, yeah. They're trying to equate the atmosphere working with ideal gas law. Doesn't work with ideal gas law. <laughs> the atmosphere violates <laughs> that. <laughs> that's So you're saying they're that's making something saying. hypothetical, uh, making that real? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, sounds like it. <laughs> Did they need? It did sounds, they realize they need a constant? Sounds like a reification fallacy. It sounds like they need to change how gas actually works to ideal gas, so they can have their atmosphere work. Are we aware of what would ideal an, gases? Would an ideal gas still require a container? Ideal gases are used, or an ideal gas would be used to describe the law. Now, the law isn't the event that you'd witness. It's just a description of something that occurs always in nature. Just a description. So to describe this law, you have an entity that encompasses gas. And it's called ideal. It's not real. It's an idea of something utilised to describe how things behave always. In this case, gas. Now... Just because there is no ideal gas, that would be the descriptor used in the law, doesn't mean this doesn't apply to gas. It's quite the contrary. Because there is a behaviour of gas being described, there is a descriptor of an ideal gas to make that description of how gas behaves. Okie doke. Got it. Thanks. So there are no ideal gases. Non, no such thing exists. There's no atmosphere. <laughs> well, atmosphere is an oxymoron. So atmo means air. Sphere is a shape. Well, gas has no inherent shape, so it's an oxymoron to state atmosphere. Although it's a commonly used word that we will often use, referring to the general air around us, the word atmo sphere is an oxymoron. What if I called it atmo rectangle? Also an oxymoron. Gas has no inherent shape. It no, no more has a rectangular shape than it does a spherical shape. But why don't we isn't just it say basically air. describing like the volume of gas within the container? Then more accurately, because it's not being like a shape stuck to anything, which would uh, violate the second law of thermodynamics. It's simply stuck in this what I presume to be rectangular shaped container of the realm. Okay, well, that's another oxymoron. Sorry. Okay, but it can doesn't only take it a point at the volume that is filled with gas? Why would it be an oxymoron then? Because well, I can't say atmo banana. The specific shape of the gas versus some other volume. It, well, you've presupposed this specific shape as rectangular, like they presuppose spherical. Well, I can say rec I can say atmo banana. And presuppose that it's banana shaped if I want to, but it's just another oxymoron. It has no inherent gas has no inherent shape, so to attribute yeah, shapes to. to it is nonsense. Yeah, but hold on, that that's only lo look. I get that, like it's not an atmosphere because it automatically also assumes that gas is sticking to a sphere in an open space. But my assumption of atmo rectangle would not be doing that. It would be assumed to be contained within a rectangular shape. 
basically. How did you yeah, validate the shape? That doesn't relate to the second law of thermodynamics. Yeah, that doesn't universally relate to gas, though, does it? That just universally relates to your idea of what the containment might be. But that's nothing right. in relation to gas itself, because the gas itself that might well be contained rectangularly <laughs> in your ideas, it has no inherent shape. So it has, it will conform to, it will become whatever shape you put it in. Yes. Yeah, be careful, Arvin. You're going to box yourself in with this argument. No, no, <laughs> no. No, no, no. no, but I always thought that you specifically brought up that remark because of the second law of thermodynamics violation that gas doesn't take a shape if it's in an open container. And that makes perfect sense. Well, no, so, it will fill whatever container the open container is in. So if you have exactly. a vacuum with a pressurized gas in a container and then you remove the lid making it an open container then the gas will fill the availability of volume that it has to fill both inside and outside of the container will become part of the volume that it's then in which would be the vacuum in my example well in the case of earth with no containment the gas will simply fill the availability of volume it has to fill and what do they claim the sky is they claim it's a space for gas to fill so that's what it must do by way of entropy Fill the available volume, whatever shape that may be. Right. Well, that was my argument, but okay. Yeah, we're in total <laughs> agreement, Arwin. <laughs> I know that. No, it's just because I specifically don't claim that the gas is sticking to some kind of shape versus an open container of outer space. So well, I, I, I wanted yes, to emphasize that, but if you're going to go yes, about gas has no shape, I get it, I get it. Cool. Arwen, yesterday, uh, doing the replay of the show, my propane delivery to truck came, and he poured uh, the propane from the truck that had a container into my container, so the gas is going to fill the shape of my container. It's that simple. Well, so you actually proved gas pressure without a container, then? No, he had. Just a said he had a container. That was a hose. joke. Oh, <laughs> yeah, that's how preposterous it is when they do it, right? Oh, that was okay. Well, you should have said you were being hilarious. good. One, Arwin, good one. Good, good that you drew the same reaction because the reaction to Arwin saying, "Well, that that would be a demonstration of gas pressure without a container." Then your description of how you've got gas into a container, and my going, "Well, that's got a container." Well, that's the the right reaction, and how absurd it is that they assert it when they demonstrate gas pressure without a container by way of containment. <laughs> exactly. Shout out to Hilbert. And the worst Google. fear in atmosphere is based on the R value. Don't forget. <laughs> yes, absolutely. That's correct. It just begs the question that the atmosphere not contained takes a spherical shape and doesn't fill the availability of volume in violation of natural law. It is merely yet another fundamentalist presupposition inserted into our common vernacular. That's all it is. Atmosphere? No, contradiction in terms. Oxymoron. Gas has no inherent shape. Takes the shape of the container. To assert it takes a spherical shape with no containment is absurd. But it's part of the language. I like your I like your uh, Atmo banana actually because you still have to peel the banana to get the banana. So the banana is in a shape in in a container of its own. Yeah, the inside bit of a banana yeah, is not gas, gas though, is it? Container. Yeah, it's not analogous. It's not gas. The banana's not gas. It might be contained by its no, skin, but it's not expanding in all directions, unlike gas or bouncy balls. Same I thing. I got. <laughs> I got a seven over six R banana well, sale going on at the supermarket right now. Okay, <laughs> let's well, let's run out. Think about it. Everything has. Think about it, everything okay. has to have a container to actually be something. Yeah, without the container, there can be yes. no pressure. Flat side saying without a container, there could be nothing. What, exactly, what you, you can't even have a vacuum without a container. When, when chocolate said, when chocolate said uh, uh, joked about the rebellious gas molecules, he, he's really he's actually being correct because gas molecules go wherever they want. They're not held to anything. They are they're all individual. So in a way, he's correct. They rebel against all other states of matter. Yes, we are all individual. Right. 
maybe they got together and decided to just stop at a certain point, Nathan. Yeah, the common but line. Gravity dome. They got it's homesick to where they were spawned. Gas lives matter. <laughs> Gas lives matter. <laughs> 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 Gas lights matter? Gas lives. It's a play on Black Lives, lives Matter. God, wow. Oh, lives. Yeah. I don't even watch I current know, affairs news and I got matters. that joke. Neil, you get a thumbs up, man. That was good. That was a good joke. That was GLM. Good. GLM, baby. GLM. I don't know what that means, but <laughs> any evidence of a self perpetuating. Any evidence of a self perpetuating molten iron core at the center of a presupposed spherical earth? No, because it's presupposed. Everything about this heliocentric model is presupposed, correct? Yeah. Shout out to Validation Boy. Every single example that is claimed to prove the Earth is a sphere will start with the presupposition that Earth is a sphere. Shout out to Validation Boy. He was the first to point that out back in 2014-15. And, uh, and shout Craig out to... Shout out to Just Phil for confirming that and saying that, yes, we presuppose a model. That's how we come up with a model. Yeah, and, uh, I, hate to it. Say it. I hate to say it, but shout out to Fight the Flat Earth for proving it on Friday's show, where every time he started, he had a beg in the question. Shout out to all the ballers. Shout out to Retracted. Oh, I but don't, you don't understand. understand. I, so no, that, I don't understand fallacy. No, yeah, no. The, what you don't understand is that you are all ignoring the evidence that's staring you in the face. And oh, what evidence? Would, what's that then? Well, to, like, there's loads of maths, and um, uh, you can see uh, pictures. Of, uh, you, you weren't expecting me to drag this out now, were you, Brian? I can tell. <laughs> Well, that, like a I kind of lost, uh, but it's out there. If, it, if you look for it, you know. <laughs> if, <laughs> if you look for it, it will be there. Confirmation <laughs> yeah. bias, the new deodorant by Adidas. Well, well, fight the flat earth tried to pull that nonsense by throwing a load of math equations at you. That, that astrophysicist Sabine Hosselfelder. Uh, that was what she said about flat earthers and our latest our, our latest video to flat earth is that there's just a group of people who are uh, ignoring all the evidence that's staring them in the face. You know, oh, really? This is something that, we heard. That lady, addressed, that lady addressed flat earth. Yeah, yeah she had this... a flat earth video. And I, oh, I, does I, she? Not, I didn't see that. Yeah, not knowing so. what uh, Brian did, I responded to that flat earth video, posted the image here on the show last week. Uh, with my comments, uh, because she cited the Flat Earth Society when she did, which is obviously not us. And uh, I posed the three housekeeping questions. And man, I've been trolled ever since. But she has not responded. And so I keep telling the trolls, well, your name is not Sabina. I'm waiting for Sabina to take a position. Now, if she wants to take your position, because they wrote long list of things against those three good you know, housekeeping questions. But she still hasn't done it. So, Brian, you may want to jump on that show and hit a like on, <clears throat> give me a like on my questions or respond to it. Yeah, I'll have a look later on, uh, Ted, for sure. Uh, well, if you could reiterate those questions, you said you asked three. Can you reiterate which ones, please? Yeah. Yeah, the gas pressure without a container. In fact, let me find it. Give me a minute. I'll find it. And I'll read the exact comment. Just give me a second. So, well, I'm going to guess. Isn't it that... great how people. Say again? Isn't it great how people have to try and make us look bad? If we're not a threat. Yeah, ridicule's the first line of defense, and it's also been brainwashed into people from birth as well. I must be an alien then. Not the first thing I did when I got to flat earth. It's very effective though. I was I was happy. <laughs> I was like because I always thought something was wrong. But the baller channels with the most amount of subs are the ones that are the most uh, that attack, or sorry, use character assassination uh, the most. Like uh, Scheme and Dan and uh, Fight the Flat Earth. They, like they, they use the, the most of character assassination. Um, and they get a huge amount of subs. 
it's easier for people to believe that we're stupid or we're crazy or whatever than actually than actually ha, actually answer or try to answer how we can have gas pressure without a container. Yeah, you but know? but yeah, but like I said. Since I've ever got to flat earth, my whole thing that got me to it was perspective. Because I studied art, it was drilled into me, and I said something just doesn't make sense. And somehow, one day I, I landed up on a flat earth thing, and from there, it just never, oh, these people are stupid or something. I just went, yeah, that makes sense. Okay, that's not stupid, but that makes sense. So it was actually a relief for me. It wasn't a, oh, my life is ending type of thing, you know? Not me either. It was easy. It was an easy switch. I was, I was felt a weight off my mind or a weight off my back. Not off my mind because I didn't think about the claw, but weight off my back once I switched. The it Simon Dan approach is a double-edged sword. So your average Drongo normie, and by that I mean somebody who's below average intelligence, will listen to Simon Dan and his pathetic attempts to debunk us. And the majority of what he's doing, as you say, is character assassination. Now, in one instance, one of Simon Dan's fans, or a couple of fans, literally a couple of uh, fans of Simon Dan, went down to a flat earth, whatever, you know, street presentation, and Dave Murphy was there. <laughs> and he absolutely ripped them to shreds, because they haven't got the vaguest clue about how any of the arguments we present work. All they've heard is Simon Dan say we're stupid, with a very cursory look at something that's been claimed, often low-hanging fruit from flat earthers that haven't got the best arguments. Nevertheless, that doesn't leave you armed to go out and challenge somebody who's been here, for example. You'd just die on your ass immediately. And that's precisely what was captured on camera. So it is a double-edged sword. If you just let people think, well, no, these people are just total idiots. They don't actually have any coherent arguments. And then you go into an arena with somebody who actually does have quite a few arguments that are going to leave you stumped. You're going to end up looking stupid. And that's precisely what happens. So it is a bit of a double-edged sword with people like Dan who don't really go into the nitty-gritty of any decent arguments. They just ridicule. Baruni's book, Refraction yes. and Rays of Horizons, in quotes, says Unitox Femu. Thank you very much for the super chat. Nathan, how are you? I just want to say I like Nathan's analogy of uh, cuddly hippotibuses. <laughs> the flat earthers are, hip are hippos. That was Arwen, not me. Oh, was that Arwen? Sorry. I'm sorry, Arwen. <laughs> yeah, hippopothesis. No, I thought about oh, Nathan said uh, a, a couple of weeks ago that flat earthers are like hippos. It's like that ballers think we're hippos. They just, you know, people like PhDs and that. I think I think I just go over and rub the friendly hippo or the dumb hippo. Yeah. And suddenly the hippo eats. Yes, yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay, yeah. That's, hey, that's I'm ready, Nathan, some, when some you time are. Ago. <laughs> okay. Did, did you want me to put it up, or are you just going to read it off? No, I'll just read it. Okay, go ahead, whenever so, you're ready. Sabina, this, this was four days ago, and uh, she was referencing Flat Earth. Uh, uh, so I responded, Sabina, you're referencing the Flat Earth Society, which does not represent Flat Earth. It's a false representation. Now let's see if you can handle some real questions. Number one, lack of Earth-based Coriolis. Flight times would be shorter flying east to west since Earth is rotating west to east on your model. They do not exist. Question number two, how can you have gas pressure next to a vacuum of space? A violation of the second law of thermodynamics. The gas would fill the available space. Entropy. Question three, any signs of a physical geometric sphere edge horizon formerly known as Earth curve? At a one-foot observer height, the geometric horizon can be no further than 1.22 miles, based on the radius of the sphere being 39.59 miles. Evidence proves otherwise. Not dependent on senses, your math, math, excuse me, not dependent on senses, your mathematical values for your refraction globe model do not match reality. And please, whatever you do, don't beg the question with gravity, the non-force force, demoted to only an effect by the uneven distribution of mass, which is 4D space-time. Time, which is a concept, a convention, not an actual force. Time can't do anything. Please show me a box of time, question mark. Thank you. Look forward to your response. 
Speaking Nothing. of gravity, any scientific evidence of gravity? Which one? Whichever one you like. That's what I was going to ask. Which one? Um, Einstein, boom, boom. Einstein or Newtonian? Don't care. So as long as you've got scientific what? evidence of it, don't care. Wait, gravity? What? Eh? What's the cause of weight? Gravity. <laughs> yeah, gravity. Gravity causes an emergent force we know as gravity. Relative Food. density Food is equal to weight. weight. <laughs> density? Relative I density. I still can't understand how people can say gra of gravity only has one vector, and then when you point out helium, they just stare uh, at That's buoyancy, flat out. <laughs> <laughs> Buoyancy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gravity has one vector. Everything is supposed to be pulled Helium out. Helium don't count. Buoyancy immediately invokes gravity, just so you know. Yeah, it is. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. That's what they say. They immediately say buoyancy, which is based on gravity originally. So it's, a, it's just a begging the question fallacy for, for, for gravity. Right. Yeah, but you, well, you understand what I'm saying? Helium also has mass. Yeah, I know that. Yeah, yeah. there's two vectors. Yeah. Uh, but then, but then Anthony... Well, matter has matter, not mass. Define mass. I think Flat Storage left himself off mute. He's talking to somebody else. He's got a customer in. I know. I couldn't barely hear him. No, boy. No, didn't Anthony use salt to do buoyancy with an egg? Flat Storage, you're not muted, man. That's right. Right now I'm working. I'm working. Uh, I'm working on this. I, well, I'm not on a call with a load of flat earthers. <laughs> we interrupt this broadcast to bring you South African haggling. He's trying to buy a geometric horizon. It's not going to go. Uh oh. Well. <laughs> Flat side. Hello. <laughs> oh, trusted panel members can't Look, I'll them. have your car painted, but right now I'm in the middle of flat earth debate. Come back in an hour, please. Yo, flat side. I don't, I don't Can you hear this? Out. You're not on mute. <laughs> terrible, terrible, terrible. You hear us, flat side. need some mic discipline. Mic discipline. Hello. Wanna look like. <laughs> it's all right we're like 45 minutes into the live show this isn't disastrous if it was two minutes into the live show this would be disaster <laughs> i might have to close your eyes oh, you guys lying down and ask discord the last couple of housekeeping questions if we can't shut him up <laughs> if, you, if you close the line down we could scream at him yeah okay i'll close the line down for a bit and we'll ask the discord server Last couple of housekeeping questions. I think we've only got one anyway, as we've had scientific evidence of gravity answered by Flatzoid for a prolonged period. So, <laughs> any single viable hypothesis from any of the fields of astronomy, cosmology, or astrophysics? That would be a no. And I don't think you can. It's an impossibility. Well, that concludes the housekeeping. Oh, we've got flat sword on, on mute. He's figured it out. <laughs> yeah, bro, you got to watch that, man. <laughs> what do you got, Rumpus? What was the question? Oh. Yeah, any, yeah, Rumpus. Any single viable hypothesis from any of the fields of astronomy, cosmology, or astrophysics was the last question. Yeah, of course not. No. No. So, when, so when is Rumpus going to jump Becky. in the canal? <laughs> yeah, well, that, well, that may happen in a four, three What's or four weeks' time. What's going on here? Very quiet, if, Rumpus. If the results don't, if the result of my little Med Bedford levels type test show that there's no curvature, and I don't have to raise a pole up about fifteen or twenty feet after about six miles away to get the, just answer this the question. Pole, can I just finish? The, then I will jump in the canal. <laughs> okay. Yay! So it's a bit you know it's cold. So, eh? Rumpus, can I ask you a question? Uh, how sure. come? You don't pay attention or have the same satisfaction with your radius of 39.59 and the modus tollens and your Earth curve needs to be at 1.22 miles at a one-foot observer height. How come you don't pay attention to that 
and really dissect that one for us. Oh, I'm more than happy to. I mean, I, my document that I'm doing on you know, this refraction thing, that's on base, which started off with Anthony Riley's observation of the Isle of Man, it's got a it has a great section in it. Devoted to something like an echo here. Um, uh, it has a section in it now devoted to the uh, Black Swan image, which of course I named and then QE copied it. Yeah, that's where he got it from. He got it from my referencing it as a Black Swan because I was having to explain it to some Earth as uh, Globus. Syllabus, didn't really understand come on. Going yeah, on. well, that's called answering. No, he Sorry. said he's more than happy to for the R. I'm more than happy to. Not the canal. He's back to the canal. No, 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 no. I'm more than happy well, to talk about well, the Well, be more important of the question. Talk through him, oh, my it? God. Right. No, I'm no more I didn't talk to him, Mark. Yeah. I asked yeah. him about right. the R. Yeah, but you have to leave him respond, though. Right. He, didn't he, did. respond. he said he's more than happy to, and then I jumped in, but he kept talking yeah, about but the don't. canal. Then why are you... Right. Like, so, so you want to talk about the black swan image. Is that what you want to talk about? And the, the claim that you... The wow, horizon has to so be clear. Oh, my God. Can I just finish a sentence? So what you want to talk about, let me get this right, is this claim that the horizon on a globe Earth has to be 1.22, uh, whatever it is, times the square root of the height. Is that what you want, that claim you want to discuss? No, that's your claim. But, yeah. The, oh, hold yeah. on. That's yeah, your claim. But it, no, that's your claim because we. No, have, you moron. No, we're flat earthers. Good. You think our claim is that the Earth is a sphere with a radius of thirty nine fifty nine, and every distance to horizon must be no more than one point two times the square root of the height of the observer in feet. That's your claim, you unbelievable moron. No, it's not. Oh, you don't claim the Earth is a sphere with a radius of thirty nine fifty nine and the geometry that would prove that. You don't claim that. Welcome to flat Earth. <laughs> You're ignoring... What, your claim? It's your claim. You just tried to burden the proof reverse us and tell us that it's our claim. It's not. It's yours, you moron. You don't seem to understand that if Earth is a sphere with a radius of 39.59, it's your claim, you moron! Claim. Your we claim? do not you... make that claim. Well, welcome to Flat Earth. <laughs> if you don't claim that the Earth is a sphere with radius 39.59... And every distance to horizon can be no more than 1.2 times the square root of the observer's height of feet, as laid down in your geometry, then you're not claiming globe Earth anymore. Welcome to Flat Earth. Welcome yeah, the to Flat Earth. Man. Oh, he's put himself on server mute for some reason. Uh Nathan, it was Andrew Thomas Young, the person he says he emails back and forth with, who made that claim. I don't understand. What's sphere. happened? Why has he gone on server mute? Coward. Bye-bye, coward. Let's kick him out then. don't understand why, when I was pointing out that he's saying, I'm not claiming Earth's sphere, radius 3959, and the geometry thereof. Well, that's him saying, I don't claim that. Well, that's him relinquishing his claim of a globe Earth. And then he went on server mute. What gives? Well, he said we don't account for refraction. Oh. Refraction is geometry. I want to ask him about whether he's going to take that perspective that I showed yesterday into account. Hold on. It's rebuttal, it Neil, was w w that's not accounting for refraction. But the geometry yeah. of Earth radius 3959 requires a tangent line to the horizon. The geometry can't be done if the line to the horizon is refracted. That would be his physical geometric sphere edge horizon formally claimed to be blocking boats and buildings in the distance with its physicality. That's earth curve edge horizon in your globe head belief. Well, according to him, we've not accounted for a fraction. Well, no, you need to do the geometry to ascertain the R value like Al Biruni did. So you need a straight line to it. Not a refracted line. You can't do geometry with refracted lines. You need tangents. So his get out is to say, well, we can't do geometry. Again, welcome to flat earth. Not refracted, geometric. That's what your model is. That requires a straight line to a physical edge called a tangent point. That would be your horizon, your earth curve. The thing you block boats and buildings with in your maths. Yeah, that's not physical though, is it? Not refracted, geometric. Bye-bye globe model. Bye-bye rumpus. Put your fingers in your ears all you like. You're still going to get a detailed explanation of how the black swan kills your model. Yeah. Uh, Nathan, can you please... Hang, hang on, hang on. Hang, hang on, Brian, please. I apologize. Uh, Nathan, put up the uh, Master B, the image of Andrew Thomas Young saying what it is. His guy, not yeah. us. What I was trying to say is the geometry is their claim. The refraction is based on the geometry, and that's a boy claim of the geometry. 
but the geometry has to be there first for their claim of refraction to What's appear that? or we wouldn't, exist. We wouldn't be door. talking about terrestrial refraction, are we? Yeah, that's correct. Uh, he requires geometry with tangent lines to assert that he's got an R-based refraction known as terrestrial or otherwise known as standard refraction based on R. And the R is based on a geometric horizon. And to measure a geometric horizon, you need a straight line tangent. Not refracted. Ding, ding, ding. Saying refracted demolishes your geometry claim because that needs a tangent. So, 10th man. All right. Numerically, the radius of the Earth varies a little with latitude and direction, but a typical value is 6378 kilometers, about 3,963 miles. If H is in meters, that makes the distance to the geometric horizon. Should I say it again? The distance to the geometric horizon, 3.57 kilometers times the square root of the height of the I in meters, or about 1.23 miles times the square root of the I height in feet. From Andrew Thomas Young, who pushes a sphere, it's not our claim, it's yours. Yeah, he denied it though, didn't he? And then ran away when I pointed out to him saying that's not our claim. When it's their geometry and assertion that Earth's a sphere radius 3959, that would be him relinquishing his claim in an attempt to get us to justify it. Right? With a burden of proof reversal fallacy? Saying it's our claim? No, it's our logical consistency that debunks your claim that Earth's a sphere. But if you want to deny that claim, that's fine by me, Rumpus. I'll just welcome you to Flat Earth. <laughs> Hey Nathan, and he. I how it. would you prove terrestrial refraction? <laughs> That's great. But how would you prove it, Arwin? Given that it's my claim. Yeah, it's a tough one. I think it's never going to be able to be proven, even if it did exist, because yeah, it kind of negates its own grounds because. If you presume that it would exist, that would mean that it would be impossible to be proven because you can't, yeah, measure the geometry then. So it's, it's literally self-destructing. It, it's, it undoes its own proof foundations. Beautifully just put, Arwen. Existing. Beautifully put. Exactly. I've been describing it as, imp as implosion. Upon declaration of refraction in this argument, the model implodes beautifully it's so great i love the black swan argument it's so nice yeah exactly alwyn because it, it means that it means that the whole geometric uh horizon of uh, the physical geometric horizon of the globe had to, had to always only be mathematics and belief because well that could I never be anything else that's because right. because refraction. its own existence undoes the ability to prove itself. Quote, the rumpus. The geometric horizon only exists in the maths. End quote. Luca Brazzi has That's nothing why. on the black swan. <laughs> Luca Brazzi. <laughs> Swimming with the fishes. Luca Brazzi. Notice the words that Andrew Thomas Young used before he went there. He used a very carefully constructed word. He said, numerically, the radius of the Earth, not actual. Numer it's a Jedi mind trick. He knows it. It's a thought experiment. So I use the word numerically. We have found our way to a segue about what we were discussing at the beginning of the show then. So when I said lying, maybe we'll come back to that later. And then I think Neil piped up or Flatsoid piped up. Um, but yeah, it's not necessarily anybody lying to you. Andrew Thomas Young in this instance has made it clear. You just had to read it. And he tells you, we're taking geometric considerations. Our measurements for a fraction are done on a flat plane. But here are the geometric considerations you can take. Well, geometric considerations. Consider that the world has got a geometry of spherical nature. That's what he's saying. But he is actually saying it to you. So who's this on? Have you been lied to? Do you need to be worried about how they lied to you and how they'll be worried about you exposing it? Should you find out or talk about it? No, because when you do expose it, what would Andrew Thomas Young say if he was sat here? He'd go, yeah, well, that's what I've said. Yeah? And we're just saying this is what he's yeah. saying. 
We just pointed out the words your priests use to describe the reification of a globe Earth model that is merely a philosophy to describe the movement of the stars. Now, the fact that you fundies have reified it into an actual sphere beneath your feet, that's your bad. <laughs> Not anybody else's. So feel foolish, fundies. You are. Hold on. They would say the same thing that Mick West back. said when he was here, and it's just based off the standard model. There you go. And, and what's the standard model? The assumption of the Earth's sphere. Seven over six are terrestrial refractions. Well, you it's still need geometry. It's, it's come back full circle because that's what McQuest told us that the radius value was a presupposed was a presupposition based on the standard model, and now we, here we are in 2020 with no R value to show for. It. So wait, they taught us the model in school, and and all this meant. Yeah, yeah, flat side. No, at no point did any yeah. of your teachers say anything other than the heliocentric model. And it's still used in that vernacular and those words by all of our opponents. It's just a model. And you were told but from, from very early on in your education, it's just a model. It's That's a right. They, they it's say it every time they ask us, where's your model? And we it's, probably say we don't have a model, but you guys do. Or do you have a still haven't seen their model. Go on, chocolate. Paul. Chocolate. Instead of saying, oh, instead of saying it's come back full circle. I'm sorry. Yeah, go on, Paul. Mute. I think I think that was me. Oh, was it you, Paul. Brian? Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Well, I just wanted to add that that even even Jesse Kozlowski, who supposedly is a surveyor, uh, refers to the WGS84 projection, which is an oblate spheroid projection which has the, the 3959 radius, as um, he refers to it in, in text uh, in, on my channel as a mathematical reference model. So it's hmm. always math. An, an, yeah. an abstract reference model. Hmm. Yeah, abstract right. being reified hmm. into existence. You can describe things that happen in terms of the motion of the stars by presupposing the ground beneath your feet sphere. Now, those who are philosophically literate will understand that, that doesn't actually mean it is a sphere but if you're slightly dumb then you'll even in the face of the information we're putting out i'm not talking about general normies here i'm talking about the fundies you'll still reify it and we're pointing out on a daily basis that this is merely maths that's been reified but you want the earth to be a sphere for whatever reason now for the average joe normie it might be the case that when he realizes and it's not that really how dear to average joe normie and it gets pointed out in no uncertain terms that we're not on a sphere that was merely a philo philosophical model that guy might just shrug his shoulders but the fundies at trench trench level now they're not shrugging this off are they they've got some very deep attachment to this model of earth well we don't live on a model and it was told you you were all told so it's all your own fault I have no sympathy. Any, anyone? So what to... I was going to say. Go on. So I was going to say the chocolate is instead of saying it's come back full circle, you're going to say it's come back flat. Indeedy. And with that, I'm going to say if you are watching this on either Nathan Oakley 1980 or Nathan Oakley premiering streams, then stay tuned as there will be an after show to follow. A massive huge thank you to both Discord and G Plus Pals for making today's live show possible. And of course, a massive thank you to all of you in the live audience for hopefully smashing the super chat, liking, commenting, sharing, subscribing, and all that good stuff. Once again, stay tuned if you're watching on either premiering stream. I've been Nathan Oakley, and I'll see you all in the next video. We can hear you. I wanted to ask mm -hmm. Rumpus about that the thing I showed yesterday on the because I'm having a thing with Rumpus 
I, I was had a conversation with him the other day. I wanted to ask him about that. Because I wanted to ask, show him my photographs there to go against what his assertion was the other day on the, on the call to me. I wanted to ask him about that, but he's gone. Be great. If no, you I could... think he knew. Yeah, that's, he, what, that's how he walked away. He left, he yeah, left he, quite abruptly. Yeah, he stuck his fingers in his ears when I pointed out where he was going wrong. It didn't make any sense. It's not like he was gagged. <laughs> no. There we go. Well, it, it, to, to me, he wants to go to a canal and do a test. Okay, go ahead. We know you're going to do it. Can't wait for your results. Okay, we want to verify it. But at the same time, you're uh, ignoring your radius, your R. That's a very simple way to test because Andrew Thomas Young gave us the numbers. 1.23 times the observer height. This is your guy your claim of an Earth's radius. Uh, the black swan destroys it, so he doesn't want to go there for the claim because there it will prove it's not a sphere. It doesn't have an arc shape. There is no curve. Earth curve doesn't exist anymore. What was blocking the bottoms of boats is out the window now. So now he's got to retreat to a canal. Yeah, but what he's going to do when you see what he was going to do when you brought that argument is he's going to argue with you all day about refraction. If you're going to keep on trying to bring it back to refraction, and that's what I, was I going wanted, to happen. I, 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 wanted, I wanted him to take me there because right under that citation is Andrew Thomas's Young's citation of refraction, and it's 1.32 miles from 1.23. A very small, very close. They're almost the same. Yeah, but he would lose the radius. That's that's He's going to say to you, that's under standard conditions. And this is where he's going to go what? with. Hold on, chocolate, that say that again. Utilizing an R value? Yeah, both are. Yeah, that's right, chocolate. Yeah, both use R. Uh-oh. I think I think I might where, have ever... Where did you get the R value from? <laughs> They'd need geometry yeah. for that. Straight lines, not bent. It's very simple. Oh, God. If yeah. only... If only... Well, that's... There was some sort of force yeah. that causes us an acceleration. Oh, Who's whispering? Speak up so I could be quiet. I didn't know you were talking. Oh, I'm just I'm just like I just wish there was some sort of force that we knew about that was creating some sort of maybe like an acceleration, a change you of velocity, wish. maybe. <laughs> you can wish yeah. away. You yeah. wish there was a force <laughs> anymore. <laughs> yeah, I think there might be one. Anyone anyone here know really? of it? Mm. What what what, I, um, what force do you think that might be? Um could it be? It's definitely. It must be an attraction between two masses, right? It must. Uh, be. Mass it must is be like a force, though. Weight is a force. Mass. Uh, is not oh, a force. I know. So I know. Mass, mass is a force, force, but there's definitely an attraction between two masses. Like, yeah, but mass is not a force. Mass? I know mass, mass is not a force, but I'm saying. So how can mass attract force, mass if it's not? Whatever a force? this, whatever this force is that's causing causing acceleration is the same force that is causing uh, an attraction between two masses. Well, okay, so what is that force, please? Oh, just let me just let me think. I know it. It's so much. What acceleration are you referring to? No, no, hang on. Pregnant pauses are good. Oh, what right. is the force? What What are you thinking? Force is there? Come on. I don't know. I don't know, honestly. But I know. Oh God, I. I don't know, honestly. Come on, just say it. I will say what? This imaginary force that you think must exist. Come on, just say it, and then we can move on. It exists. No, it definitely exists because I can measure it and I can observe it and I can test it and I can yeah, derive. If we've got an accelerating mass, there must forward. be a force. You can't just you can't just yeah, say there's there an accelerating mass. And there agree, must be a force. What, there. We want to know what that force, force is. Yeah, just let me think, and I'll I'll I'll, I'll think what it is. Just, just give me a second. I'll just say it, and then it's we can really move hard. forward. It's really diff it's really difficult. Do you know what I mean? So I'm gonna have to probably think. Well, why is I'm going to say that you haven't got a. I'm going to say you haven't got a force. Oh. That's weird because I can measure it as well. Yeah, we can measure it acceleration. Yeah, we can measure we what? Force. I can, uh, yeah, I can. I can see. I can. We can measure the force. It has a vector. It has a we, direction. We can measure it like acceleration. We can't do that. God, it's taking all the boxes but, for a force. Do, do you agree he, that? He, do you agree that he Newton's second law states it. he can measure it? What Newton's is it? Go on. No, no, no. no. What's Newton's second law? Go on. Honestly. Do you, do you agree that Newton's first law states that an object in motion will remain in motion unless acted upon by a force, and conversely, an object at rest will remain at rest unless acted upon by a force? Unbalanced force, yes. 
Yes. So when we have an accelerated mass, then there must be a force doing it. Otherwise, it wouldn't accelerate. I assert that you don't have a force to do it anymore. And you think that there is, and you're very reluctant to say the word. And I want to know what is the force that's doing it. Just say it and we can move I, forward. Honestly, I'm, I'm trying to think what it could be. I'm really yeah. trying. I'm just thinking. So well, unless you can yeah. think what it can be, then we'll have to accept that there isn't one. Uh, density? Oh no, density is not a force, is it? Can't be. No, density. density is just a scalar. Yeah, it doesn't it's, have a direction. It's weird that does there's it? this oh, thing you think I mean, you can measure, but you can't even name density, it. Then, oh, hold on, chocolate. Oh, that just, that's just that's just silly, isn't it? Because obviously, you know, if it was falling through a more dense medium, it would decelerate, and that would have to mean that the sun is somehow less dense than the Earth above it. Which sure, but stick on sense. the point because we need a force if there's an accelerated mass. Yeah, so, so, what would so, the so we've ruled out density, right? Because I've just explained it can't be density because density isn't a force. Isn't no, it? density is a scalar. It's just a number, like mass, just a number. Hmm. So what what uh, what force okay. would make things accelerate? Hmm. It's but again, it's got to be some sort of force with an attraction between two masses. Yeah, but the, be. there can't be an attractive between masses because mass is just a, in the same way that you said density was just a scalar. Mass is just a scalar too. So we know that can't be the force. So what force is it? Distance to acceleration. Mass is not okay. just a scalar. Does it does it have a name? Oh, that is a tough one. Um yeah. go on. Just say it. Don't don't think so. I reckon I could I, you know what? I think I've seen it before. I think I threw a child off a cliff like a couple yeah. of weeks ago. I don't know, I can't remember, but he definitely was accelerating. I definitely observed that. So if he's accelerating, Stay there crazy. must be a force. Whoa, 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 what are all these words getting thrown at me? God. Well, what, what was if the word you accelerated, just accelerated, there must be a force. What force have yeah, you got to must... demonstrate this? You know what? I think it might be this force called gravity. Yeah, gravity's not a force, though. That's an effect. No, no, no. What do you think gravity is? It's defined. Is? Mr. Hanway, gravity is defined, Sorry. and we know what causes it. One second. Einstein defined it as an what effect. What causes gravity? Sorry, just don't reverse the burden of proof. It's your claim. No, 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 I'm asking. We know what gravity him. is. I'm genuinely he defined it for us, in and he gave us the, the the cause of it, and it's defined as the curvature, the effect of the curvature of space time caused by the uneven distribution of mass. Which remind yeah. myself that the uneven distribution of mass is an attribute of matter. It's not a force. Yeah, Einstein tells us that it is because it bends space-time, which gives rise to a, a perception of an acceleration. But that's the current definition for gravity. It is an acceleration. It's not, it's not a perception of an acceleration. Say again? It's not a perception of an acceleration. It is an observable fact that things accelerate. Actually, it's a perception. It's not, a, it's not actual. No. It's a perception. Objects that, in free fall by. will always accelerate. That, that's by the bike. Let's not lose focus here. We're looking for a force, okay. but gravity is defined as an effect. Mm. So we haven't got a force. No. So what no, force is accelerating is an emergent the force. Say again. So an emergent force. Gravity is an emergent as you force. Said, every curvature <laughs> of space you know time, an which force is on Earth creates an acceleration. And also you know an emergent force is mass, Hold on, you're both talking over each other. Hold on. Time, which means all mass attracts mass. Can you start that again, Commander, from the top. Can you no one interrupt him, please? He, he knows what gravity is, right? The curvature of space-time, right? Caused by the uneven distribution of mass, which means all mass attracts mass, which means there is an attraction between no, masses mean that. that we can measure. That's not what it means. Mass doesn't attract oh, mass. Right, mass is a scalar. Mass doesn't. How come I, can, how can I observe mass attracting mass, then? That's really... You, you, just, said it was, you just said it was the oh, bending of space-time, though. Hold on, chocolate. It is. An uneven distribution of mass causes space-time to bend and warp, which causes mass to attract each other. It doesn't. He even said the, that. The cause, oh, it doesn't. The cause is the uneven distribution of mass. The effect is the bending of space-time. But that doesn't then no, do something you've else. Got, you've got him back. Would be, Can you please stop interrupting him? Go ahead, sleeping warrior. So the cause <laughs> is the uneven distribution of mass, and the effect is the bending of space-time. Now, if the effect of the bending no. of space-time then caused something else, no. then that would be the cause. But that's not how it's defined. No. no. You stop talking the cause through him. Is Let's just try once space more. Time. Commander, the while he's talking, on Earth. And now I'm talking. Commander, oh, right. while he's okay. talking, and now you're talking through me again, second time. Third time, I'll just kick you out. 
While he's talking, please don't nod along or say no, no, no while he's giving his explanation. It cuts the line. So just try and button it while someone else is talking. Thank you. Yes, Mr. Nathan. So, Thank you. For the uneven distribution of mass is the cause, and the effect is the curvature of space-time. However, your claim is that that effect then becomes another cause. But if it did, no, then the cause would not. be the effect of the bending of space-time, and that's not how it's defined. Okay. I'm going to tell you now that that's not true. That is not true. What you just said is just complete shit. Oh, shit. That's the definition. Uh, yeah, uh, the 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 bending of space time is the cause, and the effect is the acceleration that we experience. No, there. that's not how it's Due defined. To... It's, again, it's defined as the effect of the curvature Show of space me. time caused by the uneven distribution of mass. <laughs> so right, Einstein okay. argues you win. that. You've Einstein even, argues Einstein. that a property of Sorry, matter, really. the uneven distribution of um, of mass, causes the bending of space time. Now that's basically the same as saying that mass yeah, as a as a scalar exactly. or density as a scalar does something, which we both know it doesn't. But nonetheless, that's oh. your current definition in current physics right now for gravity. So again, let's have the answer. What is the force that's pushing the baby down when you drop it? What off the is? What is this? This weird force that attracts mass. What is it? You know, mass doesn't attract it can't mass. Be. Mass is but a scalar. I can show you. I can show you something. I can do. We can do tests that and observe things that mass attracts mass. But mass is a scalar. Think... Like remember when you said density was a yeah. um, was not a force, and I agreed. Mass is not yeah, a force yeah, either. Definitely. So why are you? So why is there, an, that it is a why force? there an acceleration on Earth? Why do things uh, accelerate the same rate in free fall regardless? That's of our mass? question. You're they supposed don't. to be giving us the answers. They don't. In free fall, they do. So if I let like go of a helium balloon, it'll free fall, will it? That's not in subject to free fall, is it? You fucking so it's idiot. not all doing it at the same rate, then? <laughs> How do my balls taste? So your claim is wrong. Not all in free fall. Not all at the same rate. In this instance, debunked by a helium balloon. And not only that, it's debunked by definition as well. Mass can't. Mm. Mass. You little angry mass squid, don't four. be kicking me. Commander, before. shut up. Go ahead, oh, sleep, warrior. Listen. Commander, in the same way that you correctly pointed out that density wasn't a force, and I agreed, mass is not a force either, because that's also like density. It's a measurement, it's a number, and therefore it mm -hmm. isn't a force. It's just a number. It's okay. a scalar, right? So, the force so how must can be mass attract mass? Else. He doesn't By understand. He's dumb. He knows he's getting raped. No, I, I'm, shut I'm, I'm up. Do you not understand? We all know Iconic. you're getting pummeled, and your only defense is to behave like a prick and talk through him. Please. You're, you're, don't, please don't swear at me, Nathan. I will I do try. as I choose on my show. You, on the other hand, will shut up while he's talking, or I will okay. gag you. Iconic. It is that simple, moron. Yes. Go ahead, yeah. sleeping warrior. Hopefully he won't mumble and mutter through every word of it like he did last three times, despite being told over and over again. Try again, Sleeping he's Warrior. Incorrect. It's because he's incorrect. He immediately he's starts perfect. talking. So I do have to gag these fuckwits who are so thick that after five explanations to shut up when he's talking and I say, go ahead, Sleeping Warrior, he thinks he's got to talk, making him mentally retarded. Shut up. That's rhetorical. Don't reply. Sleeping Warrior, go ahead. In the same way that density is a measurement... Mass is also a measurement, and it is not measured in Newtons. If you want mass to attract mass, mass must be measured in Newtons because Newtons is a force. Yes, right. So what does F equals G, uh, uh, G M1 times M2 over R squared mean? What is that? What is that measured in? What is the force measured that, in that? that that's, that's a bit of maths, and maths by definition is conceptual, and it is abstract. We're not oh, talking right. about maths. You can calculate anything you want. That doesn't mean that mass attracts mass. But, but using that formula, I can calculate the... Did you not just hear what he said? Can... Did you not hear him? Yeah, no, I know. So am, it's abstract. Sorry, with... mate, shut up. Can, shut you can up. You want, Nathan, you're being you're told right. and you're ignoring it, and now you're just doing what you did last time talking no, through No, I'm correct. You have I'm ignored him. Correct. This is maths. It is abstract. We are dealing with the physical. That's physics, not maths. Now, don't just whistle <laughs> past him. And start telling us what the equations do. 
You've ignored him. You and now you're still can't. talking through me. It's your only defence to getting destroyed. So I'll try again. Let's see if he tries to talk through it so he doesn't have to hear it. Right, mate? Don't want to hear it? Correct, yeah, just listen. Nathan. You can't because you're getting pummeled. So listening to it's intolerable to you fundies. It's not physical when you describe Nathan. equations. You've whistled past his explanation. No, I haven't. I've got to gag you, haven't I? Oh, you, sorry, I've got no what? choice, Commander. For the audience's benefit, God, I will now please. stick this fuckwit on mute oh, so I can be heard without him constantly saying no, 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 through the top of everything that's pummeling him. That's the only defence they have. I, on the other hand, can gag him and will. Now you've whistled past Tony's explanation that this is abstract maths you're using when we're dealing with the physical. Now, I appreciate that you can't tolerate that being explained twice when you've already attempted to whistle past it. Now, for whatever reason, he's probably ran away because he's only going to be here if he can rumpus any response and whistle past it and then rumpus it again if it's tried to be highlighted. He won't tolerate it. Not maths. Physics, moron. So well, let me just give a comparison for my friend here that thinks that maths is so, in some way an explanation. By definition, it's conceptual and it's abstract because it's descriptive and it's not causative. So I will do a comparison so that he can understand the point that I'm making that he ignored. This is a poem. It's only very short, but it's as useful as the maths that you're citing. The poem reads as follows. Sometimes the short poems are the hardest to write. Change one word and the whole poem <laughs> advocados. Now, the point to that is that is an equal and opposing argument to your reference for maths for being the explanation for anything because it's descriptive, it's not causative, and it's abstract. So my poem is of equal value to your mathematical description. Your response, please. I, think, I don't know if he's run away. Oh. Take him off mute. Did he get kicked? No, he's, he's back. Uh, sorry, Nathan, for making you angry. Okay, can I do it again, Nathan? Can you do it again? We just hopefully he's heard yeah. your response and can respond to it. I don't think he heard it. You could read me your poem again. In the same way that you cite maths to me as an explanation, by definition it's conceptual and it's descriptive, but it's not causative. But that does it explain things in reality? Poem. Does maths Yeah, you can't tolerate that? it. Dick. What? No, no. You, you have a, he hasn't paused isn't. for breath. He hasn't. He's in the middle of a statement. That makes you moron. That's what it makes you, a moron. Moron. No, so I'm going to have to gag you again, you moron. Can't tolerate me you telling you how moronic what you're doing is. Your yeah, you're still talking moron. through me. You cannot tolerate it. So I have to gag you. No option. Yeah? Maybe I should meet you on a neutral platform so you can rumpus the crap out of every word. It's not even me saying it. It's Anthony. I'm having to take charge because you're refusing to listen and obfuscating every word. You've given him permission to read his poem out while mid-breath you've interrupted. No. No, I didn't. Yeah. You did. Yeah, you did. I've oh, been QE! 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 You're friggin' Get done. Out. Get out. You're oh, done. There bye you bye. Go. Bye bye. He's gone. He's yeah. a time waster anyway. Let's get another crayon muncher on here. Ragnarok, Mr. Chat Skank. Oh, Come on, on in oh, here. Hold on. And oh, just, just before you do, Kudos, Sleeping Rag Warrior. You're much I just want to give Kudos where it's due. Well done, Sleeping Warrior. Thank you. Is that it? Can I, I also add? This? That's it. Kiwi, go ahead. Up, right? uh, some minute. order, please. Kiwi, go ahead. Ragnarok. Knucklehead Chat Skank. You said something about the black swan? Come on in here and, and disprove it. Come off mute. Tired of listening to your friggin' chat skanking. Come off mute. And you're going to get delivered an ass whooping. Okay, let's take some it's odds. Coming. I've got four to one on refraction. I've got two to one on the P statements are begging the question fallacy. I've got five to one on the Q statements are begging the question fallacy. Who wants to roll up, roll up, roll up? Can I just also say, Nathan, I listened back to the uh, Fight the Flat Earth hangout about six times. With the exception of one minor little thing, it was fucking brilliant. 
Um, I won't say the minor thing um, because I don't want to sound like I'm nitpicking, but um, it was excellent. You were very well conducted. You were very polite, exceedingly polite, and he demonstrated himself to be a fucking idiot. Does it get funnier every time you watch it? Or it gets better. It? It's like it wine, does, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it does. It does. <laughs> it's great. It's because you were the you star chocolate. Some... You made the star point chocolate. It, um... Nathan, you need to give it a title so that we can find it because in a week or two, once you forget what number it is, you need to be able to reference it. So just put FTFE in, in the in the title if you would. Or I have done already. Yeah, I've made it obvious. Cool. I'm giving it a unique thumbnail, etc. I have something to say. When that guy there, that uh, that commander, as soon as he said, as soon as he laid out that equation, we should be asking him, okay, explain the equation to us then. Because I guarantee you, when it comes to explaining the equation, he won't be able to do it. Yeah, as soon as you get to M. So, as soon as you get to M. Yeah. Yeah, he won't. Be, but even at that, he won't. He'll just know an equation. He won't be able to explain it. He won't be able to tell us what it is. He he won't be able to do it because he knows it as an equation. It's just it's just something he learned to say, and then he says it. But tell you- us all about it. Yeah, well, that's that, that's Anthony's point, though, isn't it? Anthony's saying it might as well be poetry to concisely summarise what Anthony's saying. He's saying, well, this is just poetry. It's as good as poetry because all my words in my poem describe is a description of something. <laughs> it's not physics. It's just a description. Well, maths is no different. It's just a description. There is one uh, step further that you can take it. You can cite Max Planck when he says that experiment is the only means of knowledge at our disposal. Everything else is just poetry. Right on. From memory, that was as well. Math cannot do anything. No, it's descriptive and it's abstract in the same way that poetry is. Lovely, but so what? <laughs> but that's the second rendition of that particular structure of that argument. So we've had Flat Earth to fight the Flat Earth and now this dude, Commander, both paraphrasing the same thing, which is if uneven distribution of mass, then bending of space time, then gravitational attraction. By way of emergent yeah. force. Well, that's second time, so that's obviously the, the latest tact, which is to essentially say, chocolate, you can summarise it better. You were the, the magic moment in this particular instance. So what, if if the for, if the not force of gravity, then the force of gravity, or something like that. He said gravity is the force that we call it, but it's created by what we call gravity. So gravity creates the force of gravity, according to correct. Yeah, and according to this commander guy, the uneven distribution of mass causes curvature of space-time, which causes mass to attract mass. Well, I've got a new question for the ballers that I've been asking over the last couple of days, is how can, or can you, or can you have um, acceleration without energy? Understand the nature of the question? Can you have acceleration without energy? Yes. I'm not going to answer. It's directed at the ballers, apparently. Well, I mean, because if, if you have acceleration, there has to be some kind of energy, kinetic energy imparted, right? So uh, how does no. a non-force force, so the bending of space-time, impart kinetic energy into an object? Well, no. I mean, an object will fall if it doesn't have structural support. It doesn't need energy imparted to fall. That's potential that energy, man. Well, That's if you have... It's potential, it's potential energy. If it's falling, then it's placed at a position where it has potential energy. It doesn't have any kinetic yet, but it's put in that position, so potential energy. Right? So something, but someone had to move it to get it there, or something had to move it to exactly. get it there, right? Yeah. Yeah, they had to collect that kinetic energy in order to turn it into potential when it started falling, right? Shh, just yeah, ignore right. that yeah. bit. Start later on in the oh, story, oh, and you can sh- assert a downward vector, and that vector can be assigned a force, and you can just attribute it to being called this thing called gravity, even though it's not a force. Did you say a force? Yeah, even though it's not a force. Yeah. I can think of it as one. Well, I'm thinking no, of it. No You've got it, chocolate. You're way ahead of me. I'm just thinking of it as a force. No Newtonian hijinks. 
Einstein completely replaced. See, it's time to move on now. See, we've been baby stepping you knuckleheads for the past three and a half years. About the past six or seven months, we've been saying it a little stronger. Now is the end point. You will not parrot Newtonian mechanics ever again because you're going to get jacked yard immediately. So we prepped you. Just be ready. I'm okay? done with that. None of the laws of motion. None of universal law of gravitation. Einstein replaced all of it. If you don't know that, you haven't been keeping up on your continuing education credits for about 105 years. That's not our fault, but we're going to drag you into it. Don't do it. I, I'm warning you, don't do it. You're going to get embarrassed. Thanks. I'm, I'm good with this. Sleeping Warrior, your, your main axe to grind is gravity. Are, are you down yeah. with this? Because I certainly am. Let's draw a line in the sand. Fuck them. Yeah, you yeah, can't have your fucking mass attracting mass bullshit anymore. It's 105 years out of date. Line well, in the that, sand that here. My, that was my little criticism because um, the only bit that I felt that things could have been done a little bit better was when he started talking about mass, when somebody asked a gravity question. We need a definition anytime somebody starts talking about gravity because the minute you get a definition, you can't cite Newtonian principles. You've got to cite the current physics, right? And we know it's Einstein. And the minute they do that, then it becomes a word salad because they've got to try and because they conflate cause and effect, they've got to try and make an effect right into a cause, and it's an effect that's done mathematically as well. So obviously, with maths being comparable to poetry because it's abstract and descriptive, they've got to try and make a real world force to push or pull something right into. Uh, they've got to make that out of a mathematical effect, conceptual right. It's complete gobbledygook. They can't do it. So it ends up being pure word salad. And you can sit back, put your feet up, smoke the cigar whilst they try and wiggle and conflate that cause and effect. They can't do it, but they will do it. They've got to do it. So we just sit back and watch and laugh. Yeah, I, I'll say that as a yes. Line in the sand's been drawn. Your use of this out-of-date rhetoric. That's it, man. No, not even tolerate busted. it. That's why I started calling it the old and busted. Get out of here. Y'all well, gotta got, deal with your new hotness. <laughs> well, I've got the cigar already, Anthony. So I'm 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 in. Yeah. I, I absolutely agree with all that. Well, the line's it's been not drawn okay then. to describe stuff mathematically and then pretend that it's real world. Yeah, you know the, yeah, mandate in, the mandate's in ballbuster Skype right now. Man mandate, okay. Ooh. It's a, it's a reification fallacy, right, Anthony? Orders? That's all this is. <laughs> Gravity is merely a reification fallacy. Don't those don't go out anywhere. The couple did. Don't put the third one out just yet. You want to read them? You can use the first. You can use the first two citations. The third one, you leave it alone. Okay. Do you, do you want to read them, or do you want me to read them? No, you can read the first. Mm, go ahead. You can read all three. That's fine. But just don't put the third one out. Don't send it anywhere. Okay. Quote, Newton's classical mechanics were superseded in the early 20th century when Albert Einstein developed the special and general theory of relativity. End quote. Next. That's from, that's from the Alma Mater Wiki. Second one's from Jacob Beckenstein, Caltech. Okay. Quote, Einstein also replaced the Newtonian law of motion by the statement that free test particles move along geodesics, the shortest curves in the space-time geometry, end quote. I'll take the last one. Go ahead. From Phys Liber Text, Professor Klein of Physics, Newton's two crowning achievements, the laws of motion and the laws of gravitation, that had reigned supreme since published in the Principia, 1687, were toppled from the throne by Einstein. You're finished. You bring it up, we're going to jack your yard. Got it? And with that, I'll say another huge, massive, enormous thank you to both Discord and G Plus panels for making today's after show possible. And of course, a massive thank you to all of you in the Nathan Oakley or Nathan Oakley 1980 premium stream audience for hopefully smashing the super chat, liking, commenting, sharing, subscribing, and all that good stuff. Be sure to check out NathanOakley.com and the Flat Earth Debate Forum to keep up to date with the community debate. I've been Nathan Oakley, and I'll see you all in the next video. I love you.